Hey guys, so here I am going over the entire Caden romance from the original Mass Effect using footage from the Legendary Edition. I wanted to get this video done first because it helps to set the stage for some of the things I'll be talking about in coming videos from the Mass Effect 2 romance scenes. I remember initially I was a bit disappointed that Caden was my only romance option as a straight female. Even in Origins, you had the choice of Alistair or Zevran, so I wasn't sure how I was going to like this guy I got stuck with, or if I even would. But, you know, I live and die for great games with romances in them, so I had to at least try it out. The first conversation I had with him was after the mission on Eden Prime. You get the idea pretty quickly, and it even comes up in conversation to confirm it, that Caden is a career military man. He definitely understands war and seems very sympathetic to Paragon responses about the death of Jenkins. He asks a little bit about how Shepard enlisted, and you can talk about your backstory here if you'd like. This is purely a getting to know you conversation, but there was nothing unlikable about him that I could pick up on. In fact, he seemed pretty decent. At the Citadel, for the first time, there is another dialogue where Caden lets it slip that he finds Shepard beautiful. Or maybe they just don't like humans. Why not? We've got oceans, beautiful women, this emotion called love. According to the old vids, we have everything they want. When you put it that way, there's no reason they wouldn't like you. I mean, us. Humans. Ma'am. You don't take much shore leave, do you, LT? Alright, laugh it up, Chief. I appreciate the thought, Alenka, but we're on duty here. Uh, I am. It definitely sounds a bit like Caden appreciates Shepard's almost idealistic evaluation of humanity, commenting on beautiful women and love. It could have been a Freudian slip, but he sure seems pretty embarrassed after making the flub. Shepard then reins it in by focusing everyone back on the mission. Then, after recruiting Liara, I found another interesting dialogue that was even more flirtatious than his slip on Citadel. Take a look. Dr. Tassoni. She seems nice enough. I mean, if you like the bookish sort. Any intentions there, Lieutenant? None, Commander. I prefer adventurous women. I love how there's this sort of dry but direct confrontation between them. How Shepard is like, so you gonna try to hit that? And he's just like, no, I like adventurous women. Oh really, Caden? I think what I like most about this romance is how obvious it is that Caden likes the commander. I mean, you could say he's not talking directly about liking Shepard here, but it seems an awful lot like he is talking about her and saying, yeah, I like women like you. And then you're just left feeling like, well, damn, that was forward. I kind of like it. <laughs> I really got to the point of enjoying these after mission talks with Caden though. It gives you a really good sense of getting to know him better. And this conversation does a lot in establishing his background and even his motivations. Shepard can call him a romantic here, and he basically goes into a long story about how his perspective has changed over the years. In the process of explaining it, he tells you about brain camp, or biotics acclimation, and you can ask a lot about his experiences if you're curious. If you investigate into whether he had any friends in camp, he'll tell you about a girl named Rana. He calls her smart, charming as hell, and beautiful, but not stuck up about it. And then the killer comes when he actually says, Like you, I guess. Ma'am. You can ask if he loved her, and he admits that there were feelings there, but that no relationship ever came of it. One of the major points where you can show your interest in Caden comes up at the end of the conversation here. Anyway, this was supposed to be a casual debrief, not a bull session about stuff that happened years ago. I wanted to get to know you a little better, that's all. Thanks for the talk, Caden. Well, you're welcome, ma'am. You, uh, make a habit of getting this personal with everyone? I didn't say I did this for the whole crew. We should talk again. I'll, uh, I'll need some time to process that, Commander. But, yeah, I'd like that. 
I think it's kind of funny that Caden has been pretty straightforward up to this point, but it's almost like he never thought in a million years that Shepard would reciprocate his feelings because he's just like, wow, it's going to take some time to soak that up. Maybe it's even that he had that crush on Rana when he was younger and he was never able to get anywhere with his feelings. I don't know if he's been in any relationship since, but given the comparison he makes when he says the two of you are very similar, it makes me wonder if he doesn't have a very specific type. And this is the first time he's had feelings returned in a solidified way. Okay, getting back on track. In this next scene, there is another dialogue available with Caden. And if you've been flirting with Liara, he gets rather informal with the commander, calling her Shepard, and talks about how she shouldn't back herself into a corner. When Shepard calls him on it, he apologizes. Actually, I'll just let the scene play out from here since practically the whole thing revolves around the romance elements of the relationship. Sorry, ma'am. Maybe I got a bad signal. And if you're a... Maybe there's someone else you'd rather confide in. Ma'am. All right, Alenko. Off the record, permission to speak candidly, cross my heart and hope to die. What are you talking about? Uh, Dr. Tassoni, ma'am. There's a lower deck rumor that she's um, interested in you as more than a source of Prothean data. I love how Shepard is just like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and Caden awkwardly explains what he's heard. Shepard clarifies that there's nothing going on between her and Liara and wants to know what the real issue. So he gets back to the point talking about Jump Zero and his biotics training. How he had a crappy teacher who had it in for him because he had talked back once. The teacher named Vernus cut corners and apparently the kids either came out with incredible powers or they just fell apart telling you that some of the kids even died during the process. The ultimate point being... Is that when you cut corners, it's not always obvious who pays for it. I don't know if I can agree with this. It wasn't so much that Caden cut corners. He simply corrected a bully who liked to intimidate kids by saying he killed their parents in the war. Just because Caden talked back, that means he cut corners. Maybe this is just my personality that makes this hard for me to grasp, but I just see a kid who feels responsible for the deaths of other kids because of something he said, and if that's the case, then sure, but it's not cutting corners. It's just an action and a consequence. Anyway, that is when Shepard asks what she can do with the info he's given her, and he says this. You also learn that if someone is special to you, you help them. Try to keep them from making mistakes. Special, huh? If I'm out of line, just say the word. You're not out of line, Caden. But there are regs. I get you, Shepard. I don't make a habit of complicating the chain of command. Just think about what I said. So there it is. <laughs> There's no more questioning whether or not we're reading too much into this. Caden definitely likes the commander. So much so that he is directly calling her special to him. He's even so bold as to say that if he's out of line, just call him on it with a deadly serious expression that I personally found pretty hot. In fact, part of why I like this relationship so much is because of this very dynamic they have between them. It's not quite cat and mouse, but it's like quid pro quo. And I'm not talking about fava beans. No, I mean, there's constant verbal sparring going on between them. Caden gives her something and then she gives something right back. There's no real being coy here. No beating around the bush. No, this is, hey lady, I like you. What are you going to do about it? It's kind of like a wall slam without the actual wall slam. Invisible wall slam. At this point in the game, I was thinking, well, damn. If I wasn't interested before, I'm definitely interested now. <laughs> the next dialogue can be like a straight on romance conversation where Caden goes right into talking about the last time the two of you talked or flirted. In my case, I think I'd been flirting a bit too much with Liara still. And so Caden was a little confused about where him and Shepard stood. I'm pretty sure this is skipped if you don't flirt around, but either way, he eventually gets back to his old teacher, Vernus. He talks about how aliens are very much like humans with the ability to be jerks or saints just like us. He tells Shepard after some light prodding that Vernus broke Rana's arm and Caden stood up needing to do something to defend her. The Turian teacher lost it and beat the crap out of Caden, even going so far as to pull a knife on him. 
Feeling his life was in danger, Caden went berserk and kicked him in the teeth with his full biotic strength. He laments that even though his intentions were noble, that he ultimately killed the instructor when he lost control in a full-on rage. What really sucks is even though he was trying to protect the girl Rana, she ends up blowing him off and doesn't talk to him again after the incident. This is why he feels the need to keep himself under constant control, and Shepard points it out rather bluntly that it was because Rana rejected him after what happened with Vernus when he lost control. In the end, Caden feels a little vulnerable and promises not to be a burden on the commander or the crew. Then they have this little exchange, which I really like. Caden, you're a strong man. Talking about this doesn't make you a whiner, and it doesn't make you immature. It makes you human. All right, but it's embarrassing you had to tell me that. You're right. I might need to loosen up a little. I'll try. Glad you'll be here when it's over, Shepard. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to some shore leave. Shore leave, huh? <laughs> Are there some insinuations of some personal time with the commander being alluded to here? <laughs> and that question actually gets cleared up really quick in the next conversation. Take a look at what I mean. Keep that in mind after this is over. I will be tracking your shore leave, mister. Well, I kind of hoped any shore leave would be joined. No, Bull Shepherd. I want to follow through with this. It's tough keeping it separated from duty. But when the mission's complete, it'll be different. I hope you feel the same, ma'am. That sounds nice. Careful. You'll distract me from saving the galaxy. It'll take care of itself one of these days. Or nights. Shepard, you are hard to step away from. We'll get this done, Commander. The sooner the better. We'll talk later, Caden. At this point, their flirtations have turned into some kind of over-the-top, mushy-gushy eyelash batting nonsense. But I don't mind it too much. I like the build-up, and I like that they're getting somewhere. There was another line I really liked too, if you picked the option right back at you instead. You haven't had the easiest life, but I like the man it's made of you. Please, Commander, you'll make me blush. I don't know why, but I love the idea of Caden blushing as Shepard compliments him into oblivion. <laughs> also, if you pick absolutely instead of can't wait, you get a really nice response. I hear you, soldier. I'm waiting with bated breath. Oh, you are good at that. I feel like this back and forth fits their dynamic a lot better. And it's weird that you'd get a more mushy-gushy response from picking the renegade option in the alternate dialogue. After you let Ashley die in Vermeer, and the Normandy ultimately gets grounded at Citadel, there is a really nice scene that you share with Caden, and it has a different feel to it since it's not in the normal spot where you guys talk, and given the situation, Shepard is really frustrated by the Council's actions. After commiserating some, Caden mentions cautiously that he hopes he's not out of line by offering the commander his help if she needs it, to which she says this. You always this cautious with a sure thing? Yeah, I always leave a way out, you know that. I'm here for you, but we're in a rough spot, and the last thing I want to do is muddy things. Like it's all that clear to start with. Are we the pride of the fleet or not? Are we valued agents or just peons? I'm sick of it too. Maybe we need to take a little initiative. You have something up your sleeve, Shepard? What am I saying? When don't you? That's what I love appreciate about you. I think you need more practice appreciating me. On the floor and give me 20, Lieutenant. Finally, a reason to look forward to physical training. My favorite part here is when she tells him to get on the floor and give her 20. <laughs> Caden expresses his enthusiasm to have a good reason for exercise for once. And at that point, I was wondering, what kind of physical training is he talking about? 
He helps her up, and if I didn't know any better, it seems he intentionally pulls her into a dangerously close embrace. The romantic tension is palpable as Shepard smirks and they both lean in for the long-awaited first kiss, and then... Sorry to interrupt, Commander. Got a message from Captain Anderson. Joker interrupts them. I was so mad. I was like, damn it, Joker, are you spying on me? <laughs> I love Joker, but seriously, that was the worst freaking timing ever. The worst. It's all right, though, because the real romance scene, the one that isn't a giant tease, it's not far off. On the way to Elos, or Ilos, I can never decide how I want to say that. <laughs> I think Elos even though I'm pretty sure they say Ilos in the game. Well, anyways, Caden comes to Shepard and they discuss all of the craziness that's happened. He wants her to know that he's enjoyed serving under the commander. You know, I could describe it, but this is one of those scenes where you're better off just seeing it. I've enjoyed serving under you. Caden, you stopped being a subordinate a long time ago. Don't you think it's time to act like a... Battlefield flirting is one thing, Shepard. There are regs against fraternization. Huh, I suppose breach of protocol will be pretty far on the list of charges at our courts martial. You know what? You're right. About everything. I think about losing you and I can't stand it. And the galaxy will just keep going. Everything, even the Reapers, will come around again. But you and I, we are important right now. And this is what will never happen again. Us. Shepard, you make me feel human. I love how in each other's face they are here. Like the tension is just killing them both and it's taking everything they have to keep from going absolutely wild. Even though Caden is still fighting to keep himself under control, he finally admits that fraternizing will be the least of their offenses. I think what's most touching is his realization that everything else in the universe will just keep on moving on and that even the reaper cycle will hit up in another 50,000 years but the one thing that won't be around forever the one thing that won't have endless opportunity is them i can completely understand the sentiment too as i felt it many times myself i've always been the type who looks past logical reasoning in the name of love and passion and in the past some people have seen eye to eye with me and some have thought eh, I was just a little too out there. <laughs> it's to be expected because not everyone thinks like that. Some people have different priorities, but for true romantics, there can be no greater importance than the pursuit of love. And that's what kind of strikes me about Caden. He doesn't come off that way at first, but if you look back at it, of all the talks you've had with a new lens, you can put the pieces together. This is a man who has put a great deal of pressure on trying to hide that part of himself. And I can relate a lot to that as well because I've had to do the same thing many times. I'll tell you what can really kill your desire to confess your feelings to someone is being shot down over and over or being told you're nuts or whatever thing people might say to make you feel like the last thing you might ever want to do again is to put yourself out there. So yeah, it makes a lot of sense why I like Caden as I see a lot of myself in him. He's cautious, probably more cautious than me, but it doesn't stop him from pursuing who he wants. Now for the next part. Bunk here tonight, Caden, with me. Is that an order, Commander? Shut up and get over here. Careful, Shepard. I might think that you're abusing your authority, a serious breach of protocol. When we get to the point where Shepard asks him to bunk with her, I love how he responds, asking if it's an order. This is another part of their dynamic that I really like, not just the tit for tat, but even the rank aspect. This is just a little bit of a digression, but it's relevant. So in my book, Wilder Than Fire, there is a guy named Leon, who's also a commander. I did not write him because of Mass Effect or anything like that. He existed long before I played the first game, but a lot of what makes the relationship he has with one of his own subordinates so hot is the fact that he is the commander. I mean, it's a prestigious title. This is a person with great power and it's not like any commander can just get the job. They earn it. So there's also a respect there. And then there's the automatic, oh, look, we're doing something naughty because there are rules against fraternizing with subordinates. You know, it's supposed to be wrong, but there is a definite turn on and doing something you're not supposed to do. 
I've always been a bit of a rebel. <laughs> I can't help but love that Caden plays on the specific element of their relationship, though. Like, are you going to order me to do it, Commander? I don't know if I'm alone in thinking it or not, but I find it pretty darn hot. Of course, my shepherd had to say, damn right. <laughs> I mean, would you expect anything else from me? <laughs> no. They finally kiss and it's all a flurry of passion, groping and grabbing as they finally let all of that tension go. I'd love to show the entire scene, but you know, I just get demonetized. So maybe I'll release it in another clip that isn't monetized where you only see the romance scene without my commentary. But it's pretty clear that their relationship has been consummated. After the fact, as Caden is trying to talk to Shepard, it's been a long time since I've met a woman who, uh... Bridge to Commander Shepard. Joker interrupts them again. Come on, man. You gotta stop making a habit of this. Okay, another side rant, Inc. Joker interruption theory number one. Joker is madly in love with Shepard and keeps interrupting them because he's jealous that Caden and the Commander got together. He wants to ruin the relationship at any cost so that he can have Shepard all to himself. Ha <laughs> ha. But anyway, back onto the scene's wrap up, I really would have liked to see a little bit more pillow talk here. Whenever I write a smut scene, the absolute best part is the pillow talk. It's like everything's been laid bare and you, the individual, all of a sudden becomes you, the couple. And they start making some honest conclusions and revelations. Sometimes it's just internal thought. Sometimes it's spoken out loud, like to each other, but it's always there. After every consummation, a new deduction is achieved. So naturally, I would have liked to see them talk it out a little bit more, even if it was just something like, dang, that was really good. And maybe, I don't know, like some reflective looking out the window. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't want to be complimented on their performance? Still, there was a story to get back to, a galaxy that needed saving that Shepard owed a responsibility to and that always came before any personal relationships she had. I think you can take away a lot of unsaid conclusions from the scene anyway. I like to think some of those unspoken truths were that it meant a lot to both of them. And in my main canon, I feel like my shepherd was in love with him, that it meant a lot to her. And that's why my main choice going forward in Mass Effect 3 was to load a game where Shepard didn't romance anyone in Mass Effect 2 because she was still in love with Caden. But I'll go over that in a separate video because this one is already long as hell. So going forward, I'm going to cover the romances on a per game basis, but I also really like the idea of coming back at the end and making some romance throughout the trilogy videos and just talking about how they rate as a continuous whole. I'm not sure that I'll be able to cover every single character right away, but eventually I might get around to it the next time I play the first Mass Effect and Romance Liara, for instance. I did get coverage for Garrus, Thane, and Jacob from the second game. And as I stated, my first romance in Mass Effect 3 is going to be Caden from a game where I didn't romance anyone. Then I'm going to go back in and see what the Garrus continuation is like as well, since I have an endgame uh, save from the second game where I romanced him. So keep an eye out for new romance videos as well as a review for Mass Effect 2 and eventually the third one when I finish it. If you're interested in that book I mentioned with my own commander, go over to my Patreon and check it out. I'm still working on giving it the hard proof as well as designing the cover and all of that, but eventually it will be released publicly. Again, it's called Wilder Than Fire, and it's about a woman named Vanessa Kearney, who's dealt with some tragedy in her past and went about drowning herself in alcohol and doing shady jobs to kind of fill the void. When the opportunity to join a prestigious mercenary unit led by the legendary commander Leon Wilder presents itself, Vanessa feels excitement stir inside of her for the first time in a long while and along with it, hope. As if a part of her that had been long dead had finally awoken at the chance to be a part of something truly amazing. Mind you, this all takes place about 1500 years in the future where being a mercenary means fighting with a giant mecha and traveling to all different parts of space for jobs. So it definitely feels relevant when talking about Commander Shepard. Could you even imagine if Shepard had a mech? That would be freaking amazing. But yeah, the first book is finished and available on my Patreon. There is a tag at the top you can click that will show you all the chapters in order. There is a lot of smut in the book, as I know many of you can appreciate, since you're all fine people with exquisite taste. 
I don't want to give too much away, but the pair are certainly fiery and so, so hot. In Legionnaires, there was a lot more story and maybe one smut scene. In this book, I couldn't stop writing smut scenes because they just had this amazing dynamic that I couldn't get enough of. You know, I just had a moment as I'm writing this where I'm realizing that I might have some new aspirations in life. An ultimate dream, if you will. Well, I mean, technically I have a lot of dreams already. You know, becoming a YouTube millionaire, <laughs> fat chance, but one can try. Becoming a successful author who writes best-selling romantic adventure smut novels. That would be pretty awesome, I'm not gonna lie. But you know what would be the most amazing thing ever? Getting a chance to write romances for video games. I wish one of the companies that makes these amazing games that I've enjoyed playing over the years, Bioware, Bethesda, Larian, I wish they would ask me to write for them because it would be spectacular. There would always be critics who would complain about something I wrote, but I think I have a pretty good idea of what the majority of people would be looking for. I think I could do an excellent job of making sure that there was that certain type of someone for everyone too, you know? Ah, <sighs> maybe one day. I just think it would be amazing to take my interest in romance and turn it into something that isn't just the written word, but an actual experience. How cool would that be? If anybody who works on these games is ever looking for some help and happens to see this video, I would definitely be interested. My email is in the info. Hit me up. We'll talk. <laughs> And for the rest of you all, I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it's been pretty long, but hey, I was feeling talkative and Caden's romance was actually really lengthy, which is not something to complain about. It had so many good points that I just really wanted to go over them all. I'm thinking the next video is either going to be the Mass Effect 2 review or the Garrus Romance review. We'll see which one comes together first. I'll see y'all later.